We are going to talk about economics, but not as we know it. This is really important and we are going to get through it with a really important new idea. Tell you what, let's think about a little story to get our heads around the idea of limits to growth. Let's say that you have an apple tree. You have a nice apple tree. It's loaded with apples. It's been a good year and you can just reach up and get an apple. It only takes about five calories to reach up and you get 45 in return. That's a good return on investment. Now, you might enjoy that for a long time. You might even be able to store some apples for later. But a friend comes by and says, you know, mate, in the village, there's a new farmer's market. If you loaded up a basket with apples, there aren't any other apples there now. You could make some money. And with the extra money you make, you could buy cheese. That sounds pretty good. I like cheese. So you buy a basket, spend some time picking some apples, carry them to the market, spend some time in the market selling them, and sure enough, you get enough money to pay back your time, to pay back your basket, and to buy cheese. This is economics at work. This is what we believe in. Now your friend says, you know, if you brought more apples, I'll bet the baker would buy them to make pies. Okay, but I'll have to hire somebody because I can't pick that many apples. So you buy another basket, you buy a cart, you hire a guy, and you bring a lot more apples to the market. Sell some to the baker as well. Well, this is all going pretty good. It takes a few weeks, maybe even a month, to actually pay back all those new investments you made, but you still have some left over. Maybe buy a new chair, something like that. Get some more stuff. That's, again, how economics works. Now, if you thought about it, if you backed up and look at the tree, you might say, wait a minute, there's only so many apples on the tree. So my ability to bring these apples to the market is gonna run out at some point. But why bother with that? The mayor's pretty happy with all this new apple business. There's tourists coming in, there's bakeries opening up, and everybody says, hey, bring us more apples. You go back, you look at your apple tree, and you're thinking, I can't really reach the apples anymore. Well, there's new technology on the market that will let you reach those last apples. And it's kind of tricky because you can't get any more apples unless you invest in the new technology to go after them. This is really an interesting position you're in right now. What should you do? You can see that the technology itself is pretty expensive. How are you going to pay it back? Well, the mayor says, look, we'll give you a subsidy. We'll guarantee a loan. Um, we'll get those apples to the market. You know, we don't want our whole apple economy to collapse. Hmm. All right. If you buy that cherry picker to get those last few apples and you take them to the market, was that the right decision or have you gone too far? This little story illustrates for us boom and bust. When there is a finite amount of a resource and we go after it and we bring it to the market, it does cause growth. It does cause new jobs. It does create new industries. But if it's a finite amount, then there comes a point where it's not worth investing anymore to get more of that, even though there's still some left in the mountain. We have boom towns and, and uh, boom and bust cycles all the time, right? There's old fishing villages that don't exist anymore, whaling ports, mining towns. This is what boom and bust is about. Turns out there's a transition point where it's not worth investing anymore to get less. Biophysical economics is the study of that transition point. We really do need to understand, and it turns out that engineers can make a big contribution to biophysical economics. Why? Because energy return on energy invested is probably our most critical thing we have to understand right now. Oil, coal, and gas, the way we've been using them in the past, those resources have an extremely high energy return on energy invested. And those resources are now at that transition point. Yes, we can invest a lot more in deep water oil exploration, fracking, um, all sorts of very interesting ways to try and get that last drop of oil out of the existing wells. But I'll tell you what, if we are at that transition point and starting down the other side, we can make big mistakes right now in thinking that investing more to bring less to the market is a good idea. 
because it's not 